You're watching EVH Gear TV, brought to you by Mike's Music. Visit Mike's Music online for all your EVH and other gear needs. Microphones for EVH Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones, and official Van Halen merchandise is provided by VanHalenStore.com. Now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH Gear artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everyone, happy Monday evening to you. Feels kind of a little strange saying Monday evening, but happy Monday evening. I hope everyone was uh, had a decent work day today, had a good weekend, a beautiful, beautiful day here in southwestern Ontario. Absolutely love this weather today. Um, it's one of the nicest days we've had in a while. I actually had the uh, windows in the house open for a little bit. Um, probably, and not necessarily on, by choice, I almost had to do that for this morning. I left a, um, went to make some coffee this morning in a tea kettle on the stove and I mistook the uh, back burner for the front burner. One of these little faux pas that I have happened to me every once in a while and um, I almost burnt the house down. Um, really just caught a frying pan on fire. Poison Ivy is one of her favorite nonstick frying pans. Come back to my office, uh, had a really busy day here at work and uh, I was wondering well, what's taking so long for that uh, tea kettle and then I heard noises and what that noise was was the sizzling of molten t uh, metal and plastic melting and I uh, opened my door to the studio here and it looked like an Aussie concert. Couldn't see the couch in the living room. You couldn't see anything. Um, it was almost to the point of crawling to the kitchen on, on the floor. So I opened up every window in the house and uh, got the fans going and ceiling fan going. And uh, within a few hours, it was, uh, it was, everything was cool. No fires, which was good at the brink of fire. So all good. So I hope everyone had a nice weekend. Like I say, a decent work day today. We're only four days away from the weekend, and that's uh, you know four days closer to a great show that I've got planned for you this Friday with Michael Sweet from Striper. Really looking forward to that show. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Going to talk a lot about uh, you know our mutual love of Van Halen. I know uh, Michael would probably love to even be in, in Striper. He could um, you know he can sing sing like No Tomorrow. He's a big fan of. Um, of Van Halen, obviously, and we'll have a lot of discussion about Van Halen. We'll talk about um, the new tour with, uh, the, well, the previous tour uh, with Striper. We'll talk about Sweet and Lynch. Talk about upcoming other uh, tour dates and things like that, and just what's happening with the band. It can be a lot of fun. Let's go over and say hi real quick to a bunch of people in the chat, and then I'm going to be opening up a relatively small box. I'll show you what the box is. This size. It's not an amplifier, but it's pretty heavy, so it's going to be pretty cool jump into that in a moment i hope you're all well so quentin james was the first one jumping in and um uh, he was uh, kind of teasing me or or himself or both of us he uh, had a bit of an injury maybe quentin can mention his injury in the chat because everyone likes to uh, make fun of my injuries uh, and I, I have been told to stay out of the kitchen so i now have a scar on my arm right there which you guys know about that that's from a pizza burn from a pizza stone uh today i almost caught the place on fire um people are telling me to stay out of the kitchen so uh I think I might have to start practicing that, uh, practicing some of those words of advice, taking the words of advice for sure. But Quentin, I think, really, really hurt his finger today by the sounds of it. Uh, Justin Grady's jumping in, uh, saying, uh, what's up, everyone? Single Core Lover says, hey, Eric. Um, let me see here. Oh, Quentin James says, they took off the arm, so just have to work on my legato uh, swear. Um, Insomniac Matt says, it was warm where I live as well. Beautiful day today. If we, man, we could have some more weather like this for the next little bit. Um, I guess, you know what, I sh you shouldn't even really complain. I mean, you talk about the weather because people obviously in other places of the world have been having horrific weather. So we can't, uh, you know, I guess it's not right to talk about the weather. But it was very nice today. Uh, let me see here. And um, Lau Ketchum says, hello all. Shall we see what goodies Eric has today? Humbucker lover. Hey, buddy. He says, hello, guys and gals. Alan Speaks jumping in saying, yo. And something like Matt says, I think Eric should stay away from the kitchen. I'll put a survey on the website. And, uh, and we'll take a survey and say, is Eric allowed to go cook in the kitchen or should he stay away? It's probably going to be a fairly unanimous vote, but I got to I gotta cook a little bit. And Poison Ivy doesn't get to cook as much anymore, um, so I'm trying to help her out. Um, because she doesn't cook much any, anymore because of her health, so I'm trying to help her out where I can. So uh, I need to be in the kitchen once in a while. I just need to be safety. Maybe I need to take some kitchen safety training. How about we work on that? I'll do some night courses for a little bit, just kitchen safety. Then we'll graduate to kitchen cuisine and then all that kind of stuff. So one step at a time. Um, let me see here. Adam EVH jumping in saying, uh, hello, Eric and everyone. Alan speaks as you clutch Eric that I am for sure. Uh, let me see here. How about lover says, um, uh, let me see. Oh, actually just say, laugh a lot. He says, sorry, Adam EVH. Hello, humbucker, single coil. Quentin James, Eric can burn water. I can, I can actually make a pretty, I can, uh, I can cook steaks and pork chops and all that kind of stuff. Pretty darn good. But the rest of the stuff and Szechuan sauce. But other than that, yeah, you're you're pretty right. You're um you're right on the money on that one. I don't do well in the kitchen. 
Jared Frost says, good evening, uh, fellas. Hey, Eric. Jared, congratulations on that really nice pedal board that you just got. And I know it took you a day or so to get all those pedals arranged. And that, that is a, a real task at hand, um, getting things where you want them. Because once you kind of get them there, you, you're there to stay. And uh, so kudos to you on that one. And I know you had to switch your system. You had some trouble with that. So, so far, it looks like you got it worked out. So uh, great. And um, speaking of rearranging pedals, that's what I'm going to be doing after I do an unboxing here tonight. So the pedal board is going to be going to be rearranged yet again. And then again in a couple of days after that. Maybe I should just wait. Uh, Tone Bolt is in here saying hi all. Quentin James, a uh, very tiny cut of my finger joking joking about needing a cat skin. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That's like me. Sometimes I get a hangnail and I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? You know, whatever. Um, but hangnails hurt, especially when you're playing guitar. Uh, one guitar man says hi. Sinner's jumping in. Hey, sinner, sinner, sinner. Uh, the Law, what's up? Uh, thanks for the sick EVH tutorial set. Uh, let me see here. Looking forward to getting it. Um, wear, uh, wear that scar with pride. Uh, pizza is love. And what he's referring to is this one here. I got to head down to the post office. I'm going down tomorrow. I was hoping to get down there today. Um, this was FedEx that arrived today. But this is going out to The Law. This is his uh, Lick Library classic albums. He, uh, Jamie was the... Um, uh, winner of that, so that's going out to him. It's a great set. I've I've got the digital version. I've been working with it a lot. It's very very good. Uh, the only thing that's the only thing that's tricky for me is it's it's t- uh, taught um, in standard tuning. So ninety um, percent of my guitars are all down a half step. So I have to grab a couple guitars that aren't necessarily my favorite guitars, um, but they got a Floyd on them and they uh, they're in standard tuning. So. Um, but that's just, I guess that's a policy when they do their, their tutorials, they, they do it in 440, I guess. So cool. Nonetheless, um, Arado says Van Halen tour rumor, uh, really nothing new other than what's been said for quite some time. I, I still think we're going to see something next year. I'm fairly confident on that, but, um, I could be proven wrong. Who knows? Uh, let me see here. Adam says, Adam EVH says, how about starting with some long sleeve shirts, maybe a fire retardant suit and a kitchen buddy. That is a good idea. I could I could handle that, especially getting into the cooler weather here in Canada in the next month or two. Um, as Adam knows, uh, you know, I won't be too bad wearing a long sleeve shirt. Not like I'm going to be sweating in the kitchen. Bruce is jumping in saying hello, AVH Care TV and everyone. Uh, Just Grady says, what's with this? Tu- what, what's with this about a tour rumor? Um, it's been it's been talked about a while. Sammy Hagar kind of spearheaded the thing, I think, just saying, you know, now would be a great time to, you know, do the reunion, uh, you know, uh, next year, uh, whether it's uh, a salmon. He was actually even toying with the salmon Dave type thing and do a little bit of Sammy, do a little bit of Dave, all that kind of stuff. Bring Mikey back into the fold. Obviously, every fan out there is um, embracing that for the most part. Um, as I am as well too. So it's just, it's, it's all speculation. Nothing's come from the Van Halen camp yet on that. Um, the only good thing I can say about that, I mean, if you, if you want to like put all these little clues together, you know, you're seeing Eddie out and about, um, very healthy, very happy, um, out in the media a lot. Well, I shouldn't say in the media a lot, but I mean out and getting captured by the media a lot. Um, you're seeing, uh, Dave Lee Roth uh, recently a few times. I mean, you know, Michael Anthony is always nice and healthy. Uh, Wolfgang's out there as well doing, you know, his thing and, you know, and just being, you know, he's always been very public in the public eye, which is cool, you know, sharing stuff on social media and things like that. So if you add up all those little things, just everyone, you know, is showing little uh, personal sides of their lives, it looks good, you know, so who knows what's going to happen out of that. Uh, let me see here. Where did I leave off? So Woodson Jimmins, Gene, Gene, Woodson Jimmins, Woodson Gene Simmons vault, like 150 tracks. And you know, let's talk about that for a second. I was really excited about that till I heard out how much it's going to cost. So he's got this vault coming out. A lot of us Van Halen fans. And actually, let me just see if I can um, highlight where we left off because I know I'm going to forget. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This is great. Um, so he's got this vault coming out. And I think it's coming soon. 150 songs, I think, or uh, material that he hasn't been able to release up until now. You know, probably licensing things with the, with the, the, his own band and everything. Like when I say his own band, I'm not talking about the Gene Simmons band, but Kiss. Probably some licensing issues there, uh, publishing rights, things like that. And obviously, they're going to be. Um, there's a couple of Van Halen ones that we made, two or three Van Halens we might get to see. Uh, you know, with Eddie and Alex performing um, uh, some basically some ghost tracks or real tracks on, um, I, th- I think, um, Christine 16 and, and a couple of the other, uh, you know, big tracks that we know of Kiss. And they never saw the light of day. And they're they're saying, rumoring that those ones are in there. Actually, it's stronger than a rumor. Those ones are going to be in there. But inside this vault, it looks like a real metal vault. Uh, Gene Simmons will deliver it to you personally. And there's two different price t- uh, tiers in this. Now, please don't quote me. I think I'm pretty accurate on this, but there is a... I think it's a ten thousand and a fifty thousand dollar tier, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds. I think that's about right. The ten thousand uh, dollar tier 
uh, price tier, he'll come to a, ho a specific hotel in your city. So let's say, you know, um, let's say, uh, like in Toronto, it's like maybe the Grand Hotel in Toronto. And obviously there'll be several, whoever buys these things, let's say there's 15, 20, 30, 40 people. It's going to be the rich people that are buying these things. Gene Simmons will invite you to this hotel. You'll go there. You probably have nice, you know, mingling with it, you know, all the press and all that kind of stuff. And he'll personally hand you the vaults, probably do a photo opportunity and things like that. Then there's the $50,000 one that he'll come to your home. And I think um, I rem remember reading that is something like you could invite 20 friends and you get kind of like a meet and greet with all those people. And the fact I could be wrong on this, but look up GeneSimmonsVault.com or just go to GeneSimmons.com to, to be sure on that. But I, I was kind of joking, um, you know, you almost need 20 of your friends, 20 of your rich friends uh, to, uh, you know, if, <laughs> kind of fit the bill a little bit. Then you're going to have to kind of share with the, the vault with everybody as they go home here. You take a few things here and you take a few things. But uh, and there's also some real special one off collectibles from Gene's personal collection, too. If you ever seen when you if you ever used to watch the uh, Gene Simmons Family Jewel show, um, you know, he has like the largest collection of everything that they sell with their faces on it. And, uh, you know, I've been told that he's grabbing little pieces here and there, special one offs um, and throwing them in as a special um, limited, uh, you know, bonus for somebody. And since I'm on the on the subject of uh, Gene Simmons, I don't know if uh, Vinny's here in the chat. Vinny comes on the show once in a while. Vinny um, Romano, I want to say a huge congrats to him. He went to go see Gene Simmons band the other night. I don't know the city where he saw him. Uh, but he, he he was talking about it for a while, saying that he was going to go see Gene Simmons. And not only did he go see him, he, he's kept his word on that. Um, he got to not only meet him, shake his hand, get photos with him, and he actually got to sing with him on stage. So, uh, and I mean, I saw the pictures he was sharing on Facebook. And I mean, you want to talk about someone smiling from ear to ear around your head and back again. Um, so great for you. I mean, you're well-deserved, buddy. Um, you know, that's a dream come true for anybody, but I know you're a big fan. And, um, you know, he's, he's going to be, I told him he's going to be smiling for the next 20 years. And I, I don't doubt that. So, uh, there you go. That's probably it on the kiss talk, unless something else pops back up. Jared Frost says it's a monster, about 40 pounds, but it's pretty nice. He's referring to the pedal board. Um, good. I'm glad it's working for you, man. Uh, and thank you. Single core lover says, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Everyone. I appreciate that. Uh, Bruce is here saying, I want to hear what's in Gene Simmons fault. Yeah. And that's probably what I just said. So, so I have such a short term memory. I just talked about it and I forgot it was Bruce that said it. So there you go, Bruce. Uh, one guitar man. Uh, oh, hey, Darren, uh, Darren Moore. More rock and rolls here saying hello all. Uh, Poison Ivy grows here. My beautiful better half is here. That's why I'm doing an early show so she can kind of attend as well too. Nice to have her um, in the program and in the chat because uh, she doesn't get to stay up very late anymore. So, And uh, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to go to bed a lot earlier too. Um, let me see here. Single Coral Lover says Adam EVH is full of helpful hints. A lot of people saying hi to Poison. And Justin Grody says, nice shirt, Eric. Thank you. This is from the Van Halen store, and I always like to say where you can get them. I mean, Van Halen store has been great to me for the last year and a half. It's the le very least I can do to say thank you, Jeff Hausman at Van Halen store. And the link to this exact shirt is in the description below. It's a great shirt. It's tight on the sleeves, which is nice, like the ringer shirt they call it. It's kind of neat. Um, I like it a lot, and I haven't worn this one for a while on the show. I've got around 25, 30 Van Halen shirts, but I just try to rotate them as much as possible. I almost have to watch last week's video to see what I wore so I don't wear the same shirt again. Um, it's just whatever is not wrinkled as I, I know I don't dry any of my shirts. Um, I like to, I like to hang them to dry. So I wash them in the washing machine and hang them to dry. So uh, if they're not wrinkled, I'll throw them on. If they're wrinkled, I just fluff them a little bit in the dryer. Uh, let me see here. Justin Grady says, nice shirt. Yeah, thank you. I just said that. I could, should call myself Jimmy two times and repeat myself twice. The, these shows would probably be so much faster if I would just say things once. I'll try to work on that for you guys. Um, the loss is same. Uh, let me see here. E flat for life. Yeah, I know. It's you're gonna have to find one guitar where you have to tune it up, or else if you've got a good pitch change or whatever, uh, pitch change your guitar up a half step. Uh, let me see. Humbucker Love says hello, Poison sweetie. How you doing? Uh, Bruce says lots, lots of well wishes to Poison, uh, and she's doing okay. She says. Uh, let me see here. Dirty Apes is jumping in. Hello from Montana. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Jared says Sammy is playing here in Dallas in October. I'm going to that. Awesome, man. Uh, try to get some good shots if you can. If you're close enough to the stage, take some pictures and share them with us, I, which I'm, I know you will. That'd be great to see. Um, Erados Erados says, much support for you, Eric. Thank you. Um, oh, and one guitar man, is uh, he's from Italy. So ha hi, all from Italy. Thank you for joining us. Um, let me see here. Insomniac Matt says, I'm about to show how little about Van Halen that I know, but I have Hagar and Roth ever sung together live with Van Halen. Um, n no, but they have done the Sam and Dave tour, which is... You know, uh, that's the closest thing to it. You, you know, is one would headline one night and then the ni next night it would be flipped the opposite way. And that didn't go over very well. 
um, as you can expect. Um, you know, two lead singers. I, I mean, what's worse than one lead singer, two lead singers? No, I'm just kidding. Um, bad jokes, I know. But it's, uh, no, they haven't done that yet. But who knows if that uh, that could happen next year. We don't know. Uh, totally, totally open to uh, to see anything like that happen. Uh, I'm just looking forward to having Van Halen on the stage again. I don't care wh- who's doing what. Um, you know, I'm more power to anybody that puts this together, makes it happen. Uh, so I'll take it as it comes. Um, and see, there you go. Uh, Darren says, no, they have never sang together with VH. Um, and let me see here. Um, let me see here. I must have missed something. Uh, Red Stratocaster says, hello from Brazil. Uh, thank you for joining us from Brazil again. You were on the show there a couple nights back there too. I appreciate that. It was a fun show with um, uh, Rusty Cooley. Really enjoyed that. Uh, very, very cool dude. Uh, you know, he's a little bit late, but that was just kind of a mix-up. It was kind of a mistaken communication on both our parts, uh, different time zones. And I've had this happen with people in the past before. Am I calling you in my time or am I calling you in your time? And then, you know, it's like one of those things where we each understood each other the opposite way. And so we had about a half an hour delay. It was fun, though. I just ad-libbed and I got through it. Uh, let me see here. Justin Grady says, not live with Van Halen, but they did a D. Yeah, he just mentioned what I said, the Sam and Dave kind of tour. Um, uh, oh, I guess someone must have, must have swore or something like that. It's okay. We've got to, yeah, we just got to try to watch the language in the chat. No, It's all it's all good. Um, we do have a few youngsters on the show um, from time to time here. Uh, let me see here. And I, I, I totally missed it, so it couldn't have been too, too bad. Uh, let me see here. It's all good. Uh, Hugh Cobble's jumping in saying, good evening, Eric. The loss is you should check those zip tie anchors for your board. Um, add adhesive holes to your board, and then you slip the zip ties through to secure the cables. I just rewired mine last night, and nothing moves. Yeah, for underneath the board, I would probably do that. On top of the board, I, I think that's what you're referring to. I might do that underneath my board. Um, but uh, what I do is mine right now, too, with the idea bench fastback. There's big holes in the top. I run my cables down underneath and then back up to go up to the next pedal and so on and so forth. And um, speaking of which, I'm going to be having, I want to arrange this very, very soon. It's not it's not booked yet, but all I have to do is pick up the phone and make it happen. I want to get uh, Rick uh, from Idea Bench on the show one night, just dedicated strictly to the pedal board. And then another night, I want to get Jody Page back on and do a night dedicated to Pedal Snake. And the things they're offering these days, um, as a lot of you know, and some people in the chat actually have the product and love it. And uh, Jared, I think you could benefit from that product as well too. I'd be more than happy to um, to give you some some advice and point you in the right direction with it because uh, it can really clean up the, even the board that you have right now, get a lot of power away from the pedals and stuff like that. But you know, if you're not interested, that's totally fine as well too. But I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody that's interested about that product and people that I have turned on to it have been very, very uh, impressed. Darren Moore is, is one example. Uh, Gustavo Gonzalez down in Miami. Um, and I hope you were safe, by the way, Gustavo. He was checking in with me a little bit, and he was at the time. So, But he's he bought the exact same custom pedal snake that I have because we have almost the exact same rig. But no two rigs are exactly the same, depending because we don't have all the same pedals and all that kind of stuff, voltage requirements. Uh, let me see here. Uh, but, yes, thank you for the tip on that, uh, Jamie. Um, let me see here. And Lau Ketchum says, it's awesome how you get folks from all over the world. Rock on. I love it. I know. we got we got Brazil. we got Italy. Uh, we've got, we we're all over the place, and I love it. Uh, Dan Wilhite says, yo, what's up, Eric? Uh, let me see here. Uh, New Brunswick, Canada from Iron Z. Iron, Iron Z 18, uh, or Iron Z. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correct, but at least I, I spelt it right. Uh, says, cheers from New Brunswick, Canada. Uh, you'll be, what, three hours? Are you three hours ahead of us or two, a couple hours ahead of us? Uh, single Coil Lever says, uh, oh, Bruce, I got you in trouble. Um, so Poison Ivy saying hi to everybody. And Somnac Matt says, you got to duct tape your pedals to your pedal board. Yeah. Actually, what I use is I I use the 3M product called Dual Lock. And it's I love it, and it's a curse at the same time. I love it because your pedals never come off. And I hate it because your pedals never come off. So you can see what my, my love-hate relationship with that stuff. So in a moment, once I start, once I shut up, I'm going to open up a box here in a second. And I know there's going to be a bunch of thumbs up flying up now because I'm saying I'm going to shut up. Um, but uh, I have to move pedals again. So once I open this box up, you know, obviously you know it's going to be a pedal. Um, I have to move pedals again. And this is a big one, so I'm going to have to move a couple pedals. The good thing is a couple of the pedals. I, I have a great little guy that um, that is becoming a great guitar player, great multi-instrumentalist. instrumentalist. Sorry, trying to get that word out. Eric Jr. Bain Rocks is um, just impressing me every day um, with with his knowledge of the guitar and other instruments. Um, I really think he's going to be something. I'm passing pedals down to him as I, as I move things around. So I've already given him uh, my Boss TU2 tuner. Um, give, I gave him the other day one of my Boss DD3s. I had two of those. I got rid of one. 
um, and uh, I'm ga I gave him one. And so when I open up this one tonight, there's going to be another pedal going to him as well. So he's getting, he's actually got my old pedal board. I was going to sell it. It has a real nice professional rack case, uh, and it's just a home built board. I was going to sell it just to you know, get it out of the house and make a couple bucks to move some stuff out of the house. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to get much money for it, if anything, and shipping is going to be god awful for whoever buys it anyway. So it's, it's not a practical thing to sell. If I sold it in a music store here locally, well, cool. And I thought, you know what? It's got some actually some, some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's, you know, uh, memories. I guess we'll, we'll go with the word memories. It's got some memories to it because I use it with the band with a lot of professional bands. And it's been on a lot of the in the stages with some of the bands that we all grew up to listening. And so he loves it. He's thrilled with it. Um, now, unfortunately, with his katana that he has, he has a 50-watt katana. And it does have great effects in it, obviously. But he wants to start using some pedals. It doesn't have an effects loop. So there's some there's some uh, the things that you can't really run great with it. As you know, like taking a digital delay and running it to the front of an amp, uh, amp's input. You know, it's not it doesn't sound the best you got to keep your your feedbacks down and your effects level to just barely on but he's i'm going to probably uh, down the road um get him a lunchbox and uh, a, a 412 or a two at least a 212 and he'll have nice effects loop and everything like that so he's graduating pretty quickly um and he's really loving his pedal board so um so there you go uh let me see here and okay good so the loss is yeah he'll, underneath for sure he'll tag him in facebook later thank you and i i might want to look at that too because my pedal board i custom my customized it with uh led lighting too and that might be a godsend for holding my led lighting in there um because um the the lighting that you get those strip lights they come with that really really cheap adhesive tape and so I've been using another 3M product. It's a dual-sided sticky tape for for uh, for those lights and other kinds of things like that. They're supposed to, you can hang like five pounds off a wall, uh, like pictures and stuff like that, no problem at all. But they just don't seem to want to stick on metal. And I don't want to rough up the underside of the pedal board. So um, uh, they, it keeps falling. So maybe this thing that you're talking about, Jamie, will work and that might hold it. Uh, so two hours ahead is what uh, Iron Z says. And Darren says, pedal snake is the best thing for your pedal board. Great to hear. I know he was excited with it. Uh, Jay's Tacos and Guitars is uh, jumping in. She's so excited. M uh, Bruce says, single core lever, it's okay. Uh, holy poop is not profanity. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Alan Speak says, hey, Jay, love your channel. And uh, yes, it's a very good channel. Um, I, I commented the other night on the show. I think it was when I was waiting for Rusty to come on. I was saying what I liked about Jay's channel is the fact that you know, we all do reviews out there. A lot of us are doing product reviews. And I'm the first one to criticize myself and say, sometimes my reviews are too serious. I don't mean for them to be serious. I just don't want to, like, I don't come off, a, I, I can't be good at being silly or funny, you know what I mean? So I, I don't do it. And I don't mean to make it sound like, okay, class, pay attention. It's not one of those military type routine uh, uh, demos either. Some people can pull it off. Henning Polly can pull it off with the with the humor. And uh, Jay, Jay can pull it off and does it very, very well. So look Jay, look up Jay's Tacos and Guitars and uh, and ha you'll have some fun with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, one of his recent ones he did, um, there, it's kind of a throwback to some you know 80s, 90s infomercials and uh, at the very beginning. And that's what I love about it. It's great humor. So check that out. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, hurry up. He says, all right, we're going to get to it. We're almost down to the very bottom of the chat. And I think we're just about done. Uh, sentimental is a word. Thank you, Darren. That's exactly what I was looking for. That's such an easy word. Always on the tip of my tongue. Just wasn't tonight. And that's exactly what it is. It's very sentimental. And everything you see here is going to be Eric Jr.'s um, down the road. Anyways, it practically is all his now anyways. Um, but uh, that's why I, I love that kid so much. We have such a great bond uh, when we, we do this stuff. We're building. Actually, in the very near future, we're going to be knocking on a wall here. And or also, if we're not going to knock the wall out, we're going to be putting in a, a, a big, uh, you know, uh, dead and glass or soundproof uh, window. And then we're going to be soundproofing the other room over there. And that's going to be the continuation of the studio. So we're going to have much more room, be able to get a full drum kit over there uh, and obviously fully soundproof and everything like that. So acoustically sound be nice. So we're making a nice little, uh, nice little brig. As you can see me behind me, I try to move out of the way. I redid the rack there as well. So I got that all done. That's uh, the rack was one of Poison Ivy's nice rack. Um, uh, I mean, nice plant rack, right? So we had to keep it appropriate. But anyways, put the LEDs in there as well too. And it's I think it looks pretty good. Got the 412 in the bottom, took the bottom shelf out. So the 412 fits there. Uh, got the 100 watt, the two lunch boxes and some of the mini guitars and some of the Walking Dead stuff up top. So I'm liking that. It's kind of feeling like a real studio in here, uh, very comfortable and cozy. So it's got a real inviting environment for, uh, for uh, making some music and some fun. So very cool. Um, okay, there you go. Let's have this. Here's a good tip. Um, Brandon says, Brandon Baldwin says, maybe looking to getting Eric Jr. an orange micro dark, a neat little 20 water that has an effect soup for about 180 bucks. Then maybe get him a 212. He would be killing it then. I'll look into that for sure. Thank you for the tip. 
Um, very, very cool. I'm, I'm totally not opposed to orange at all. I don't know. I, I know the brand. It's been around forever. And I've, uh, I just, I've never even played one that I can recall. Um, but I see them all around and they do have them here in Canada. So I will look into that for sure. And I appreciate that tip. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Jay's guitar says, love you, Eric. Thanks brother. No problem. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry. Don't mean to cough. Um, uh, Alan speaks says studio looks great. Eric, thank you. Um, and Jay's tacos and guitar says, uh, looks top notch. Thank you. All right. So let me take a quick sip and let it open up that box and let's have a look see what we got. Now, of course, I know what it is. And this one, I thought it got lost. I seriously thought it got lost. This one took a real, real long time to come. But unfortunately, it was not the fault of the manufacturer. It was a slip and it was just a mistake in the system. It looked like it had been sent. It was actually just in queue. Um, everything was in stock. It was just a, just a computer error. So once that computer error was rectified, it was here within days. And uh, I missed a call today. FedEx had called and said, oh, we have a package. Uh, are you going to be around to deliver it? And of course, I'm here. So that worked out great. Uh, all right. So here we go. Um, let's open up the box. All right. Cut away from myself, right? Poison Ivy, that's what she always says, and, which means I always cut towards myself. Let's have a look. I know this is heavy. So there'll be another pedal. If this is what I think it is, which I, I'm 90% positive it is, uh, there'll be another pedal going to Eric Jr. as well, too. All right. I was going to hook up my second camera. You can probably see it behind me. It's on a, it's on a tripod over that shoulder right there. Right, right there is my other cam webcam. I was going to put that on as my additional camera and just I could put it as an overhead here, but I just didn't get time. This almost looks like Van Halen. It's not Van Halen, but it is. It does have that feel, doesn't it? Doesn't it have some Van Halen feel to that? Just needs a couple thin stripes, and I think we'd almost have a Van Halen feel. But it does have that nice logo that a lot of us are aware of, that you can probably see right on top of the, my uh, watermark on my show. Strymon, I, or as I pronounce them, Strymon. All right. Some paperwork. Which is all good. Fantastic. User manual, the whole works. Let's have a look inside. I love their packaging. You know me, as you watch me do unboxings on the show here, I totally jones out on packaging when it comes to road microphones and all these guys that have the nice packaging. That really sells me right off the get-go. Designed and built in the USA. A lot of you guys can probably tell already what it is. Big Sky. The Big Sky Reverb. Let's have a look. This thing is built like a tank. All right, I'm gonna start with the power supply by the looks of it. Nice. I won't be using the power supply. Uh, I'll just put it aside because I'm already using a Strymon product. I'm using the Strymon Ohi multi uh, multi out uh, nine volt, eighteen volt out um, regulated, all isolated and regulated power supply, which um, is powered through the pedal snake, which is great. So I won't need that. But here's the pedal. And this thing is quite heavy. And I got some more Strymon stickers. That's great because I need some Strymon stickers. Here we go. Check this out. This thing, oh man, they really, really nailed it with this pedal. There you go. Try to show it on the right angle. Do this here. This will make a good thumbnail later. <laughs> that, I love it. So you've got uh, different types of reverbs built in. Uh, you've got, I'll try to go over from maybe say nine o'clock position all the way around. You've got spring re reverbs, spring reverbs, swell, bloom, cloud, coral, uh, shimmer, uh, magneto, um, nonlinear, reflections, uh, and then down towards the bottom, uh, room, hall, and then back to a plate. Okay, yeah, then plate, then go back around again as well too. So you got your decay, your pre-delay, uh, pre mix, tone and then parameter one and parameter two each patch will have certain um, a, a further adjustments that you can make sometimes they'll use one parameter sometimes they'll use two and they'll each have a different effect uh, you know kind of a, a, I guess an effect on top of the effect whatever and then uh, modulation obviously as well and then you can push to store three button MIDI in case anyone's asking about MIDI um, and then you've got uh, obviously your nine volt is it nine volt yep nine volt in here your left in right in uh, so you got stereo ins, stereo outs, and then an expression pedal as well too. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can uh, hook up your expression pedal, bring in your volumes, bring in your uh, more and more. And probably not volumes in this case. Actually, you could probably control the amount of output and then amount the amount of the the reverb effect as well too. And then what else do you have there too? It's hard to see without my uh, um, 
cab or filter cab filter off or on no i'm not 100 sure on that one if that's what yeah i'm not sure what that or what that does um we'll have to read the manual on that one as well too but for at first glance the unit is uh like i always check the knobs and everything like that as well too everything is solid it feels like everything metal uh, throughout it could be plastic uh, pots i don't know but uh the, at least the caps everything is solid as heck sometimes you get these things where there'll be a, a heavy metal knob on there but uh, the shafts are all plastic and stuff like that they very well could be but it's a momentary type latch, which I like, as opposed to instead of clicking and clicking off, just like uh, you know, like the Boss products, which I'm familiar with, with the DD500, like I have. So what I'm going to be doing with this? So first of all, thank you very, very much, Strymon. Uh, the uh, staff at Strymon have been uh, good to me already with uh, uh, working through um, the the trifecta of the other great guys, uh, Pedal Snake. An idea bench working with them and obviously they're they're kind of the brains behind the power uh with that system that we're working on so they've sent me this as well i'm going to be doing a kind of a shootout video down the road in the very near future i'm going to be comparing this one directly to bosses basically it's basically these guys are the competitors the big sky from strymon and the boss rv500 i've got the rv500 and the md500 which is a modulation um pedal coming uh, both from boss they should be here probably by the end of the week and i'm going to do a shootout between this one and the rv 500 now someone that already has done a killer 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 um shootout video is henning Polly, which i talked about earlier i was uh, talking about his uh, kind of lighthearted um reviews and he did a great one he did a, a review on all three of the boss products versus all three of the uh the Strymon products um so th you know they, that's a great video it's actually for his videos too it's not that long it's only around 45 minutes and he goes he shows you the same patches on each pedal um so this one i believe is going to be more than likely going to be the one that's going to be staying on my board and then with the boss rv 500 i'm going to more than likely be using that as a processor off to my right through my mixer as an effects loop uh, as an effect send and return um, for various, you know, if I'm doing some acoustic stuff here or, you know, just various special effects that I will require from time to time and even for recording sometimes as well too if I'm not going to use any built-in plugins and stuff like that. Uh, you know, just quick demos. So we'll be we're doing a shoot on that for sure. Let's jump back over to the chat. So yeah, this is fantastic and I will have this on the board later tonight but this does take a good two pedals in width. So there's a couple pedals that are going to be coming off uh, the board. And uh, when the boss gets here as well, too, there'll be a couple other pedals that will be coming off. I'm going to be more than likely pulling off my MXR analog chorus, and that's going to be going to the boy. And I'm going to be moving that. Um, you know, that's frees up another another spot as well, too. And I can do a little bit of juggling. It's either that or else i got to start getting an extension from uh, from Rick at Idea Bench and do another half a moon on my pedal board because I'm running out of space. But uh, at the same time, too, I'm not just adding pedal after pedal after pedal. I'm moving some because eventually, uh, you know, I'm not going to have any tone left if I keep adding a million pedals. But right now, the rig is quiet as can be. I no longer even use my Boss NS2 noise suppressor. Uh, so uh, thanks to Jody, he's got that rig as quiet as quiet can be. All right, let's jump back over, and where did I leave off here? Um, let me see here. I know where there's a lot of uh, comments. Uh, um, and actually, Bruce says, can I get one of those mugs? Do you still sell those? You know what? I think I have one left. Let me see. I'll tell you right now if I have one. The last one. So, Bruce, yes, I do. I have one last one. I'm not sure if you can. You, you know what they look like. Still sealed in the box. I got to even look on the website how much they are. They're on, I think they're on the website. If they're not on the website, I'll get you a price. I think I had them for around 15 bucks or something like that. I'll double check. But Bruce, um, uh, just message me through Facebook and I'll tell you the price on them. And I'll, I'll make it very affordable for you for sure. Uh, shipping might be a little tad bit expensive, like not more than the mug or anything like that, hopefully. Um, but shipping from Canada just is a real drag. And I feel guilty of that for people. Even to send people stickers, it cost me three bucks. And I'm not making money on it. Like literally, you'll see the sticker price on it. When it gets there, it'll say three bucks. But I'll, I'll try to find the most affordable way to ship it to you. And that is the last one. Uh, so there you go. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, let me see here. Insomniac Matt says, cut away from myself. Instantly starts cutting towards himself. I know. I know. I know. I do. I can't cut away from myself. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, well, then again, I am a bit accident prone. So I guess I got to be careful. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, single coil ever says, uh, okay, I've been causing trouble. Brad uh, is jumping in saying, hey, awesome. I say, hey, all an awesome pedal, Eric. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and Samak Matt says, if you're unable to get a cheap 212 cabinet, I've heard good things about the um, Harley Benton uh, 112 cabinets through both uh, that German guy and also uh, Glenn from SMG. Oh, very, very cool. Uh, I'm probably more than likely, honestly, um, unless I absolutely have to go with something else, I'm probably just going to grab something from EVH gear. Um, why not? 
right? I'll grab something from those guys, a 112 or a 212. I do appreciate those tips, and I may still go that route. You never know. Um, but, you know, it, it, it Junior's really digging the EVH gear as well, too, and he wants to try to stay as much EVH gear as possible. But I do like that idea, that orange that was suggested earlier. So that's very, very cool. Who knows? That, that could very well be the first orange amp in the house. So that'd be really cool. And I do like that one. Speaking of the German guy, uh, uh, Henning, um, he does a demo a lot with that one orange model. I forget the, na- the model of it, but apparently it's one of the only uh, stereo tube amps uh, in a combo uh, version out there. And uh, phenomenal sound. He uses that in a lot of his demos. And I want to look into that one. Not that I want to buy it or anything like at the moment, but it's, uh, it's I, would, I would like to look into that stereo tube amp. Very nice in a combo. Uh, let me see here. Jay Sacco says, uh, whoa, sweet. Uh, Humbucker lover, uh, welcome back. And uh, Poison Ivy saying nice. Let me see here. I scroll too fast a lot on this here. So single color says it's great. Uh, it's gorgeous. Love the color. I do like it too. I'm not a blue person. I'm more of a red person, but this is going to look really nice. It's going to stand out on the uh, on the board for sure. And I guess I'm kind of used to seeing blue as a chorus. Or actually, this is a reverb, but I mean my uh, uh, chorus is blue already on there. So it's going to be something I'm going to be used to seeing. So it's not, it's not going to throw me for a uh, loop. Um, but the quality yeah, is phenomenal. Uh, let me see here. Jay's Taco says, yeah, that with the big boss delay in this one, that's a lot of real estate. It is. It is. Fortunately, the board is quite large, and I'm going to be pulling off two or three more pedals. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I've already got the DD500 on there. So DD500 plus having the uh, the MD500, the modulation effect one. And that's going to be nice too because that pedal is going to kill several birds with one stone. I hate to use that phrase, but you know what I'm saying. It's going to do several jobs with one pedal. It can do, it's a tremolo, it's a, it's a flanger, it's a phaser, it's a um, uh, kind of a, I don't know if it does pitch to tune, but um, all, I should know all the effects on there because I've watched a million of the videos already in preparation to do my own videos. Um, but it's any kind of modulation effect you can think of, like a ring modulator, all those kind of things built into it as well so I'm looking forward to that uh, let me see here um, jump down a little bit further um, oh there you go uh, 12 fret says Eric you need to get yourself the Strymon Riverside OD pedal there may be another distortion pedal they come out with they are killer pedals congrats on the big sky you will get lost in it thank you I, I do anticipate getting lost in this pedal and I'm looking forward to it uh, some of the reverbs I've heard in here are just like just dreamy dreamy reverbs but I've seen that pedal a lot and I just haven't, I haven't even inquired with them about it because I really wasn't in the market. Not that it probably could be phenomenal. I'm just not in the overdrive market right now. Now, uh, that being said, I was not also in the market when um, Wampler sent me the Pinnacle Deluxe. Um, they sent me that to try it, do a demo on it and give it away. And um, I was not in the market for that whatsoever. And I absolutely loved it. And I did not want to give that pedal away. Um, Michael Smith actually won that. He should be getting that any day. He's got the tracking number. And he told me it's at his post office. He just hasn't gotten there yet. So congratulations, Michael Smith. I can't wait for him to unbox that thing and, uh, and take some pictures and send it my way and, and let me know how he likes it. I love it. So long story there is the fact that um, you know, I'm not looking for a distortion, but maybe that is something I might like. I'll reach out to the guys and I'll give it a try. It might be kind of cool. Even if, even just a demo would be very cool. Um, let me see here. Um, oh, Cutie Pie is here. That is actually my granddaughter, which is very, very cool. Hello, Cutie Pie. Nice to see you here. Yeah, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> uh, let's go back a few here as well, too. Nice to see you. I hope you have your homework done. Get your homework done. Um, and I, yeah, she, I just got a text here twice. One second here. There's a delay. There's a delay. Uh, Lyle Ketchum says, if it comes missing, if it comes up missing from your board, I swear it's not on mine. No problem. I've got good security here. Trust me. I got monitoring everywhere. It's almost like Fort Knox here. So it's going to be very hard for you to get it if it goes missing, unless I'm doing some kind of a remote thing somewhere and I bring it out with me, then it might be a different, uh, a different story there, but we're pretty, we're blocked in pretty tight here. Uh, let me see here. Um, Hugh Caldwell says, um, and my sister got an EVH and a band autograph when he was in Glasgow, I think in 1990, in 1994, he also gave her a ticket to the show at Glasgow Ballo. I was so jealous. That would be, that would be awesome. That certainly would be awesome. Uh, scary groove says loves a new look. Um, the, yeah, the studio, I changed it up a little bit and it was funny about a week ago. I think I was telling some people that might've saw the show. I moved all the furniture around in here too. And poison Ivy is um, she is my fashion consultant as far as, or my furniture interior decorator. That's what I'm looking for. And I said, okay, I'm going to change stuff around. Cause I just wasn't happy with a couple things. I wasn't happy with the couch over there and you don't see my guitars. Like it's hard to even see some of that stuff. If I can move, you can see more guitars over there in the back corner and then there's stuff over here. Whoops. Stuff over here behind me as well too. And you normally don't get to see it. So I was trying to move some stuff around and then I showed her and she's like, nope. So I had to put everything back. She goes, if you know, if, if I don't like it, you're gonna have to move it all back. Uh, you know, or if we don't like it. And I was like, yeah, I know, I know. And then I had to move it all back. And I was like, oh, I was all bummed out. 
but I think I've got it now to the point where I like it. Uh, the rack helps a little bit. Really, I mean, did I, I didn't really need the rack, but um, it's uh, it gets stuff up a little higher off the floor. I put, add some lights to it. It does kind of accent it a little bit. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm glad you like it as well too, Scary Groove. Thank you. Um, let me see here. Oh, yeah. So she's saying, uh, I felt bad for the poor guy. Good thing it wasn't my cast iron pan. I literally melted this nonstick frying pan today. It was a good one too. I mean, not a super, super, super expensive one, but not a cheap one either. And I literally burnt all the nonstick stuff off because it was like ash. It was basically ash in the thing, ash in the air. It was almost like it was just crazy. It was like fallout in here. Um, and uh, and she told me, she said, um, if it had been her cast iron one that's been passed down from generation to generation, I would have been probably kicked out of the house. So, uh, um, and then she actually, she texted me throughout the day. And she said, uh, is, is a frying pan clean where she was going to fry something up for lunch? And I said, um, or the cast iron frying pan clean. And I said, well, actually, I'm sorry to tell you, that was the one that I burnt. And, um, and then she didn't text me back for about a half an hour. And she was pretty upset because <laughs> she thought I was I was serious. And it's hard to joke in a text message, isn't it? You can't really express your inflections and your sense of humor in a text message. And so I was like, oh, you didn't think I was serious, did you? And she she did for a bit. So uh, once again, honey, uh, sorry for the, the poor humor on that one. But uh, her cast iron frying pan um, lives another day. And I would have been hit with it for sure. I, I seriously would have been hit with it. Not that she would she's, would do those kind of things, but that's how much it means to her. Uh, uh, there's like It's like me and this cast iron frying pan. And the, yeah, the cast iron frying pan is, is, has more weight. Uh, I mean, more love for it, I think. But she loves me quite a bit too, so I'm still blessed. But I'll be second fiddle to a frying pan any day, especially the way she cooks. You know, I'll take it any day of the week. Number two uh, or number three or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, let me see here. Um, okay, cool. Bruce says he'll send me a Facebook message. Perfect. That's great. And I'll, I'll hook you up with one of those mugs. I'm going to be doing a lot more merchandise runs here in the new future too. I pretty much got rid of everything that had the old show name on it. Put that one to bed and uh, getting new stuff made up with uh, EVH Gear TV. And uh, we'll have some new cool stuff from shirts to stickers to mugs and hats and pretty much anything you can, you know, wear you know, except underwear, um, we'll have a logo on it. It'd be cool. Um, and maybe underwear will be next year. We'll see. Uh, had it with the band before. That was a real, that was a real fun treat. Um, you should have seen us trying to bring a whole bunch of, uh, ladies underwear, uh, thongs and things over from the United States across the border, anything to declare. And you open up these boxes of underwear. It was, um, it was very uh, interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. I'll save that one for another day. Uh, let me see here. Are you able to still do much gardening? That's ask, that's from Single Coral Lover, and that's to Poison Ivy. And unfortunately, no, she can't. Um, but she can't today. It doesn't mean that she can't tomorrow. We're very optimistic, and it's we don't make plans anymore around here. We don't make plans for next month or next year, or you know, not even we're not even thinking as far as Christmas right now. We just we like actually now. It's really really made me change my life in a very very good way. Because here in the house, including Eric Jr. too, we live each day for each day. Don't worry about we don't worry about we don't worry about yesterday. We don't worry about tomorrow. We just worry about today, and um, it's great. It's a great way to live. I mean, obviously, you're still planning. You're planning ahead, playing, paying your bills, and all those kind of things. Uh, bills that are coming down the road, um, but living for each day has been great. It's really, really nice. You know, going to bed smiling, and you wake up smiling. And uh, I haven't. I know I've always had a good life. But it's just, I don't think lately I've smiled as much. You know, you appreciate the family and you appreciate the love that you have. And, uh, um, you know, it's one of those things. And so there's blessings and, and curses along with this at the same time. The curse is that her health uh, limits what she can do. And, uh, I mean, I'm not saying like cleaning the house and things like that. I'm gladly, I'll gladly pick up the slack there. And I do. It's just, she doesn't have the enjoyment that she used to have with, you know, playing with the, the grandkids and, and those kind of things. And even just, you know, just us. But it's all good. She's here and we love her. So. Long, a long-winded story. You know me. Uh, let me see here. So, yeah, Kitty Pie saying hi, pops. Very nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming on my videos and uh, catching a live broadcast now, which is great. Like I said, I hope your homework's done. Maybe you don't have any. It's the first week and a half of school, so you might not have too much homework. Uh, but get it done, please, before it's late. Um, Dirty Apes Inc. says, been loving my EVH Phase 90 for my solos and my band so much that I took out my wah pedal from my board. My pedal board is always changing. As all of us, yeah, we are change a lot for sure. There's some pedals on my board that are always going to be the staples. It's going to be the delays, uh, you know, whether it's the Boss DD500 or, or whatever. Um, you know, obviously my EVH Phase 90 is something that's going to be a staple for probably the rest of my life until it breaks, and then I'll replace it with another exact same one. Looking at my board, you know, um, 
really, yeah, those are the staples. And I have the EVH wall, which I don't use a lot. I probably use around, um, I'll probably at least use it every time I play guitar, but I might only use it for 10% of the time that I'm playing the guitar at that at that session. But it's something that I, I love. It's it's a great pedal as well. And I like been, lately I've been using it a lot with the uh, Boss o- OC3 Octave. I like to do some octave riffs, kind of uh, Rage Against the Machine style, along with the octave. And it gives some, uh, some fun fun, funky uh, riffs with that as well too. And distorted, of course. So who else we got? Uh, Quentin James says, Air can probably melt a cast iron pan. I probably could. I probably could. And I'm so lucky the fire department wasn't called today because the smoke that was bellowing out of the house when I opened up all the windows, like it literally looked like the house was on fire. And um, thank, thank goodness we don't have any smoke damage, um, you know, with our clothing and things like that because it was lingering for quite a bit. And I just got the windows open, the fans going, and I was taking towels, you know, and kind of doing one of those things and trying to fan it out the window. Um, but yeah, yes, I, I could burn the place up if I'm not careful. So uh, I got to be careful. So darn things. Here's here's a little funny thing. If you guys we can turn this into a discussion for a second, I like to always throw this out there. Some things that you're embarrassed to admit that you're horrible at. Um, and I'll give you a couple of things that I'm horrible at. Now, one is cooking. Okay, but. I, I, I'm not saying not necessarily cooking, um, dangerous in the kitchen. I am for sure. But, um, so uh, the stove, okay. Well, our stoves are, you know, we have like the four, four burners as most people do. Maybe you have more and I don't know, but the four burners and the front and back things, it's pretty, I mean, it's a no brainer. You look at it. I mean, it's not rocket science, but one shows the back, one shows the front, but it's sometimes it's, it's so simple that it's confusing. And I turn on the front. I had uh, a, tea, a tea kettle on the front. And I had this nonstick frying pan on the back. And I thought I'd turn on the tea kettle. I thought I'd turn on the front. In, that, in essence, I turned on the back. I walked away, came back to work. Like I said, it was a busy morning, right back to the computer, uh, building websites for clients, and right in the middle of code. And, you know, that's when you're focused, right? And all of a sudden, I hear this noise. I go back out there, and it's sizzling. What I heard was molten lava, uh, metal. And I could have, like, forged some new steel. And uh, it was it was a mess. So that's one thing I can't do well. My other thing I have a hard time with is milk containers cardboard containers or you know juice containers whatever you know you, you tear them back fold them and then, and then like that cannot do that to save my life i will tear i will destroy a carton of milk every single time i do it whether it's a little one for like you know your school lunch ones you get out of school lunch size or the big two liter thing of milk I, I just destroy them every time craft dinner box don't even get me started on that but um but yeah those things simple little things like that i'm sure boys and ivy will say a couple more too little tiny things that just drive me crazy probably drive her crazy but people comment down in the chat just let me know i mean, I mean don't be afraid to admit it i'm sure uh, no one's gonna laugh at you because i just admitted a couple things that i do horribly and uh, it's it's quite funny and the milk thing really really frustrates me i just can't do it i actually just learned how to um um, roll out those uh, Pillsbury crescents because <laughs> I'm doing a lot more cooking uh, for the boy and stuff like that and he likes crescents um, so I had the hardest time first of all getting those darn things open and then poof you know that kind of deal so that is something else I struggle with let's continue on and if anyone else has any comments on that as well too just throw something out in the chat that you have a hard time with that's kindergarten easy for most other people uh, I scrolled way too fast uh, you know what I'm going to do let's go backwards let's go backwards from the bottom of the chat and then we'll catch back up how about that um, Mystic Stars jumps in and says he has a hard time talking to people. You know, that is not an easy thing for everybody. Uh, and sometimes that's where social media, I think, sometimes um, became such a huge hit with people because the shy people could actually just stay home and communicate with their friends without having to be like in a social setting, which kind of sucks. But it also is a, is a you get to meet new, meet new friends and then talk a lot on social media and then eventually maybe get out there and, you know, you now you've got a little bit of confidence and then two or three of you that might be socially awkward get in that little setting where you can talk and then you don't feel so bad anymore. So so that's cool. And you're not the only one that's like that, Mystic Star. There's lots of people like that for sure. <laughs> Chase Ombre says, I'm getting Eric a hockey helmet for Christmas. Okay, I'll stripe it up red, white, and black too. That'd be good. I, I could use it. I could use it. Uh, Dan Wilhite says geniuses have a hard time with simple concepts. Well, there you go. Well, thank you. I don't want to. I don't want to dare label myself as a genius because I can just see comments already on that one. So I won't even go there. But there you go. Uh, Jay's talk was guitarist's laugh my ass off craft dinner box. Yeah, I can't do it. Cannot do it. I just 
just hear it like that. Mike's Music Online is jumping in. Uh, he says, just checking in on you. Great show as always. Thanks, buddy. Fantastic. We haven't talked for about a week. We just exchanged some emails about a week ago. Um, you had a great concert. I think it was Alice Cooper that you went and hung out with for the day. Uh, man, that was that was great. He was treated like royalty. That was pretty nice. Um, very, very nice. So good to see you, Mike. I hope everything is well. well. We'll catch up real soon for sure. Guaranteed. Uh, let me see what else have I missed as well too. Uh, Jean uh, Francois Gagne says hello. How's that? I, that might sound like I almost got that name right. I do have some French in my background, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, my mom was uh, pure French, and I used to have a lot of that. I was very good in French as a kid, um, and I just lost it um, over the years. Uh, Bain Rocks is here. This is Bain Rocks. So Bain, you're gonna have. Uh, um, a reverb pedal coming to you. This one's going on the board, and you know which one's going to you, so that's fantastic. He's going to love it, and uh, he's going to put it to good use for sure. Uh, go back a little bit more. We're going backwards, and we're going to catch up. We're jumping all over the place. Uh, Sean Tubbs is jumping in. I'm sorry I missed you earlier there, Sean. You, I just, just seeing you now. He says, I'm I'm a little punchy about my cast iron. There you go. <laughs> um yeah, just the simple little things. I, I know I had a list before of the things that I can't do very well, and there was like the milk carton deal, stuff like that. Um, I know this is, is some people will say maybe you, you can't do guitar very well too, but <laughs> that too, who knows? Uh, let me see. Let's go back. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, Chase uh, says, uh, Sean, I love the Dirty Shirley demo. Uh, Sean's saying thanks. And yes, that was great, Sean. Any demo you do, man, I mean, you nail it out of the park for sure. Um, and I know you don't rush into it for the most part. You give it a lot of pre-thought, pre-production thought, uh, production and post-production. So you do a very, very good job. You, you impress the world for sure. Uh, let me see. Who have I missed here? Have I missed anyone? It's very rare that I jump back and forth like this. Um, let me see here. Uh, and single coil lover saying to Poison Every Bummer, I love seeing your pictures. I can't do much outside anymore. Um, and now I've got about 60 house plants. What we're actually going to do for Poison Ivy is we're going to uh, uh, bring up some of the plants to her room, which is nice. We're going to take another rack like that one back there. I just so happen to take the only b flat black one we have. She has uh, several more of those, but in chrome. And um, sadly, she wanted the black one. I didn't know that until after, but she's cool. That I, The chrome would not look good in here because chrome would just stick out like a sore thumb. But with the black, you really don't even see the rack back there. Just It's kind of kind of blends into the woodwork back there but we're going to bring up a, a big rack of her plants up there and kind of gives her some you know something that she loves a lot up there too the plants that she's puts her heart and soul into some just from little seedlings and I don't know leaf cuttings and all those things like roots and stuff that she does when she would like uh, transplant them and all that kind of stuff so that'll make her happy to see that stuff up there as well too uh, so we've got a couple of people at least saying that they would be a little upset with a cast iron frying pan. I'm going to go out and buy a real nice nonstick uh, regular one now too, just because I, uh, like I said, I, I, uh, I ruined it. So thanks Mike on the comment on the show. Uh, and you're welcome as well, Sean. No problem. You do a great job. Um, oh, single cause didn't, didn't you notice he didn't read my comment out loud. I'm not sure which one that one was. I did not purposely admit it. Uh, I'd have to go back and see it. And um, humbucker lover, humbucker lover says, "You're lucky, Eric. Um, thank you. Yes, I know. I'm I'm very blessed with uh, the, my family. Um, like I said, learning to live every day for each day is uh, you. You don't know how blessed you are until you live like that. And uh, it's been a real eye opener. And you just like, there's days before this stuff would stress me, like just you know work or or you know who knows what." weather or headaches or just whatever and nothing like that gets to me anymore you know like even this morning I, we, I got to bed a little bit uh, late last night and um, and I woke up smiling ready to go like you know it, like it's almost like I had four coffees when I was up and I was up at 6 30 so uh, it's good it's a life a life change for you for sure um, and you know what I don't know that and my, so it goes to show how uh, speak French just um, I, I think he's saying I speak French not bad for a guitarist Parlez Francois is just sweet guitarist. I think he's saying speak. I uh, speak okay uh, for a guitarist. I think. Am I correct on that, Jean Francois? I hope so. Listen to me. I almost sound like I know what I'm saying. Um, I hope I got that close to that. Parlez Francois is just sweet guitarist. Maybe I'm close. Let me know if I, I know. There's a delay on my voice right now when you hear this. What goes off to YouTube? But let me know if I'm close on that. And single crow says, "Oh, I heard about poison ivy giving you a plant rack." Will guilted me all about it. I did see, I did see that because Will commented on my photo and said, "Oh, see when when your wife gives you something, see how nice it looks." So uh, there you go. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Dan Will Height says, um, "Make sure you don't water the amps." Hey, I I don't even water the plants, so uh, I I think I'm okay on that one. So I won't water the amps. 
Uh, and Humbucker says, so true. I'm blessed beyond my wildest dreams now that I, I love being friends with your family, Eric. No problem, man. Um, it's it's good to have for sure. And it's we the world needs more uh, reaching out from different different people and different sides and stuff like that just to be um, be, be friends. And the world's it's a you know it's a crazy place, isn't it? We've seen that as of late for sure. I mean, uh, today is is a perfect example of that. Just take a brief moment. I just want to say, um, you know, in, in uh, memory of the the day today. I don't even want to say the day online. It was nine eleven today. Um, I'm not sure what YouTube allows you to say and what they don't allow you to say. But you know, it's a it's a very sad day for a lot of people. I've seen some of my friends posting online today that. Um, a very good friend of mine, I won't say who he is, but a very good friend said, um, you know, he's not upset today. He's angry and he thinks, you know, we need to still be angry. And I agree with that 100 percent, you know, angry at what happened. Um, and and, and uh, where the sadness comes in is of the families and, and people and good people that we lost. And, uh, you know, everyone from innocent workers to first responders to you know, women, children, uh, every every walk of life, um, every every nationality. Um, it's a very, very sad day. So um, I was going to actually do like a bit of a, a, a mention of that on the beginning of the show. And I just wasn't sure how I felt comfortable doing it, but I'm saying it now. So just a, a, a pause for, a, you know, a brief just reflection. And uh, actually, that's what little Eric and I were talking about the other night. We were talking about reflecting. And and this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to reflect. Just uh, reflect on, you know, what's come, what's uh, wh- where we are today as a society and uh, be grateful. Um, you know, just be grateful that we have rights to vote and, you know, uh, freedoms that we have. So there you go. I'm not going to get too, too, uh, poli- not, certainly not political. I never get political, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get too deep. I just wanted to at least take a moment to say, uh, you know, um, uh, huge prayers, thoughts to families that were lost and continue to suffer, um, you know, from losing their loved ones and things like that. So there you go. Um, let me see here. JM, um, I like JM. Hot tube, if I, I hot a tube, um, that's a bad. I can't say that one very well. I'm sorry. Um, I'm very bad at pronunciation sometimes. It's funny I can pronounce something French, but I can't speak English now for some reason. Um, he says, uh, uh, "Damn well, height. Good to see you here. Deleted my Instagram account. Long story. Okay." And he says, "Loves this channel." Uh, and uh, Mystic Star says, Eric, have you been able to share the flyers I sent you from my collection? No, I haven't yet. I've only downloaded them and saved them to a folder. I haven't done anything with them as of yet. I want to go through them and see if I can arrange them by um, um, by date. I want to try to chron- put them in a chronological order, and that way they'll have a bit more of an impact when I start showing them to people. So Mystic Star was very cool to send me a bunch of uh, original Van Halen handbills from back in the day, um, you know, basically when, you know, David Lee Roth was, you know, writing all these things on his own, drawing the maps, drawing like logos and you know uh you know adult one dollar cover and dollar you know it's for a keg and all this kind of stuff so i'm going to get those uh, organized right away and uh actually what i'm going to do is i'll put them on the website as well and i'll share them on the facebook page too sean tubb says well said eric thank you i appreciate that and thank you very much you know me i, I never want to I, I don't want to i don't delve into areas i don't know anything about and that's why you know i didn't want to sound like like an idiot when i was trying to pay some respects but i do want to pay respects as a matter of fact i did want to do like a whole intro for it and and just but if i if i couldn't have done it right if it was going to be cheesy i didn't want to do it so i elected not to so here we are uh at least paying respects so thank you sean uh, let me see here. I speak French. I'm a guitarist. <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I, did I hear back if I said that correctly? Um, so what does that mean? Par, parlez Francois, je suis guitarist. I think that says I speak okay as a guitarist. Maybe not. Or, or did someone say what, that, what it was? Maybe I, I speak French. I'm a guitarist. There you go. That's what it is. Okay. All right. So at least I was somewhat, there, someone in the neighborhood. Um, so I don't have a lot else to talk about. It's an early Monday evening, and I'm, I don't want to wear out your Monday evening. You're probably all extremely uh, uh, mentally and physically exhausted from working today. Um, I'm going to have a fun show this week. I'm probably going to be doing some more unboxings this week, but I guarantee you at least we'll be going live another time this week, probably do some performance um, uh, performance uh, demos and things like that. And it's kind of funny too. Just, just I'm, One of these days I'm going to do a, a Q&A because I've got a lot of emails. People ask me all these different questions, and I haven't done a Q&A for a long time. And so instead of you know writing back to a bunch of emails and stuff, I'll tell people where I'm going to do a Q&A. And maybe this Wednesday, uh, quite possibly, I'll do a Q&A and just address a bunch of emails that come in. People ask me, how do I do this? Or what what block do I need here for my guitar uh, from Futone? Or what, what do I need for this? Um, and uh, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, uh, you know, we get some people that like me playing my band songs and we get some people that 
don't really care for the band songs. But I'll just get this is my my little um, my little uh, answer to a Q and A that gets asked a lot. Why do I play it so much? A perfect example. I don't get copyright violations for playing my own music. It's my own. And actually, one time I did. Believe it or not, when my band was actually trying to uh, to make it, you know, we we were on iTunes. We you know we we had done a lot of tours, and uh, across Canada. And um, we were in all the you know online entities that you could possibly think of, Amazon and CD Baby and iTunes and every, everything you could think of. And so we were out there. We had our own YouTube channel, of course. And so I was using one of my band songs in one of my videos. It was actually, I think it was a pedal board demo. And I actually got a copyright flag next day saying this music is is uh, registered to uh, Finding Core and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... But I'm the guitar player in that band, and I'm, I'm one fourth of the band, and I had to actually prove who I was, and then I was able to get the copyright flag rescinded. But now that's one of the reasons why I do it. Number one, there's no music I know better than my own music, and number two, there's no copyright violations. So why the heck would I not play it? Some people choose, some people don't like it, and hey, you know what? I, there's a lot of music I don't like, a lot of it, uh, and there's some of my own songs I don't like. Don't get me wrong, there's the records that we wrote. I don't like every single song. There's someone like, oh man, that did not turn out the way I wanted it. It's there. Um, but it, hey, it's an easy way to do it. I know the material. If I'm playing um, uh, products, it's a great way for me to get the sound of that product out there and something I'm very knowledgeable about instead of making mistakes halfway through it 20 times. And, uh, you know, so there's there is an answer to one of many Q&As that are going to be coming in for sure. Uh, let's go back down to the bottom of the chat. Mr. Xer says, a very nice view, Eric. And, um, oh, thank you. And JM says, uh, thanks for commenting on 9-11. Um, very welcome. The, the very least I can do in, in a case like this. I mean, um, it, you know, I it's I, I do remember the day. I, I'm going to, this is my last thing I want to say, but I remember the day like probably a lot of you do. Um, you know, just like when when seeing the Space Shuttle Challenger with its its um, its problem, its disaster. Um, you know, I'm trying to be careful with my words. Um, but with the Space Shuttle, when we had the tragedy there, uh, 9/11, I remember a lot of people I saw commenting on Facebook today were saying it was, the weather was just like today. It was a beautiful, beautiful day like today. It's beautiful, clear sky. Um, so it's it's very ominous. It's a beautiful day and also also an ominous day at the same time because it really brings you back and it's something that we'll never we'll never forget. And that's that's the whole that's the whole motto: never ever forget. Never forget our 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 fathers and grandfathers and great great grandfathers and that and and grandmothers. Not just not just the men and the women too that served in all the wars that are that allow us too to be able to you know have YouTube like this and hang out in a peace in a peace environment without being you know uh, looting in the streets and you know tanks rolling down the streets and things like that. Um, we're we're very fortunate. So um, I mean we get to hang out tonight with people all around the world on a YouTube channel and just talk. So we're we're very blessed, you know. Whether you're rich or you're you're not so rich, um, we're blessed. So uh, let me see here. Bruce says he enjoys watching me jam. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that, and and you know that's great. I know there's some others that share that sentiment, and um, I I get you know I get the uh, the vibes, and I see people like Sean Tubbs pop into the chat, things like that, and uh, just because you see some of these guitar players that I I really admire. They're, uh, they're a real kick in the pants when it comes to the mojo. That's for sure. Mike's music. Mike Palermo, you guys see him play? If you guys have not seen Mike play, um, look up. Um, the link is in the description below. Um, look up Mike's music online.com. Go right to his website and have a look at the demos he does on his guitars. Insane. And he's got, he's, and I think he has, I'm going to go on the record to say that he has the best demo on the internet of the tone of the 5150 EL34. Um, it's uh, just absolutely amazing. And some of the other 5152s, uh, 5153s, the 50-watt um, the combos and stuff like that as well too. And he explains what effects he's using on there. He's got some Panama-type sounds and stuff like that. It's just absolutely nuts. So look that up, and that's another great player. And obviously Sean Tubbs as well. Uh, look him up. I mean, it's no no explanation needed there. Just just insane. And a lot of the guys, all you guys that are in the chat too, like from Jay to Bruce to uh, to Mystic Star, and I'm just looking at names going back. Dan Wilhite, well, hey, I can go all the way back. Uh, Humbucker, all these guys are all great guitar players too. And that's why we all we just that's what we're here for, right? We just hang out and talk guitar and gear, and that's that's what's all the fun. And the cool thing is, half the time the, there's only I'd say maybe 10% gear talk, and um, um, the rest is all kind of fun stuff. You know what I mean? And it's really funny too. Here's, here, I'm going to throw one other little tidbit out from the Q and a sessions, you know, and sometimes it's not necessarily, it's a Q and a, or sometimes it's, sometimes it's questions people ask me, or sometimes it's just comments I hear from, you know, through the grapevine people say, well, that's all you, I don't, I don't want to watch the show because all you talk about is EVH gear. And then the other people will say the show, that show is so far away from EVH gear. It doesn't even, that's, they don't even talk about anything about, like, even remotely close to EVH gear. Well, there's got to be a balancer somewhere, right? Some someone's not getting it 
hundred percent. I'm either talking about EVH care too much, or I'm not even talking about it at all. Um, you you do you figure it out. If you figure it out, please let me know because I'd like to know where I'm trying to, where I'm going wrong here. Um, let me see here. Uh, oh, Vintage Sounds is jumping in saying hi, EVH Gearheads, Eric and Ivy. Thank you. Uh, let me see here. Dan Wilhite says, hey, oh, hey, man, on my phone, I can barely read the chat. I'm afraid I need some glasses or a bigger phone. Hey, I can barely read it here as well, too, and I've got it blown up. I'm going to be putting up a big monitor here soon above my monitor here that I'm going to use just for the chat. And, I and uh, well, I don't want to put it up too high because I don't want to be looking like I'm looking off into space. But I'm going to try to do that so I can at least read a little bit. Uh, Hugh Caldwell says, I'm a terrible cook. Happy, happily, I have a French girlfriend. There you go. Well, they, as, um, if she takes care of you, then that, that's that's great. Got a spoiler in return somehow. Um, Mystic Star says, hey, Vintage Sounds. Poison saying hello. And um, uh, Adam says, I fully agree, Eric. Mike just kills it on his demos. He does for sure. Dan Wilhite um, says thanks. And if I if I miss anybody too, like we talked about the guitar players, Adam EVH is one for sure. Vintage Sounds, uh, all these guys, um, phenomenal players. Joey Marquez saying uh, good evening, Eric. And you know something? I think I, maybe I'll show you because you guys I don't think I've seen this. I've I've put it in pictures. So let me just grab the um, the fifty one fifty uh, EVH for a second, and I'll show you what I've done to it. Um, some people that are friends of mine on Facebook have seen that already. Some people that follow the 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 uh, the show's Facebook page have seen that already, but some people haven't. So I'm going to grab it and show you one sec. I was just looking at it sitting back there. So I thought, okay, so before I share what I've done recently, I'll just go back and show you the uh, the Futone upgrades. So I've got the 37L uh, 37L brass block in the back, noiseless springs. And you know it's funny? People ask me, I've had a few people ask me, Eric, how come you've, you've been doing Futone for so many years, like as far as, you know, uh, working with Adam and stuff like that? You never buy a brass, bl- a brass claw. And you, you, you're right. There's no reason why I haven't. It's just... I've overlooked it. I've always overlooked it. Not overthunk it or overthought it or whatever. I just never did. So I'm going to start putting brass claws in all my guitars as well too. I mean, it's the only piece that's missing, right? So we'll ignore that just for a moment because I haven't done that yet. So I got the brass block, which is great. The black noise springs, which are the the I think the second lowest intention, uh, or like easiest intention or lighter tension. I guess that's what what I'm, what I'm looking for. Um, and I'll try to show you my whammy bar. Like I can I can dive with this thing now with with one finger and it's still flush on the body that's the way i like my trim now i am tuned down to e flat but i love that now without showing the headstock i'm not going to show you the headstock yet now i haven't done the titanium um string lock blocks yet i'm going to be putting those in but i do have all the stainless uh string locks and of course the detuna uh, which is standard okay and then i did put on the stainless steel locking nuts um but here's the cool thing have a look at this let's try to get position ready for this because obviously everybody into the sun that was going to get this guitar EVH was pretty cool when I don't think this was done on purpose maybe it was done on purpose but the EVH logo like you would normally see on these guitars is quite large oval right in the middle of the headstock in the strat style headstocks uh, on this one here they put it off to the side and they left a white stripe open you know where I would normally say Kramer um, and obviously this is an homage to Kramer it's not the exact same guitar by any means but it is a nice a very darn nice tribute to the guitar that Eddie pl- was one of the longest playing guitars he's ever had so here's what I did for it. There you go. Can you see that? How's that look? Same font. Try to focus on it. How's that look? You guys like that? I like it a lot. And it's the reason why I wanted to do it. People are asking me right away if I was going to do the Kramer thing. And I thought, you know what? The EVH thing is a little too close to home for me to to put something else on it. And, you know, same umbrella company. So I thought, let's go with Fender. And I got the logo with... Um, with Fender, the Fender font on it, and uh, I tried various sizes till I got it right, and it's uh, it's vinyl, which is really really cool. So it will, it's, you could take it off if you want. It's not a water slide decal because water slide, you know, you put that on there and you could be on there for good, um, and start you could get some yellowing and things like that. This won't yellow. Now, sure, the white will fade underneath it a tiny bit, um, or I mean around it. So if I was to peel it off, I might have a little bit of a Fender spot. But I like it a lot. I'll show it to you one more time. I, I like it a lot. Can you see it? There we go. So this guitar, little Eric was even saying to me, he goes, Dad, I've never seen you play one guitar so much. And it's true. I've been playing this thing nonstop. And I've been playing more guitar. I'm actually blessed with this guitar because it's made me, like, I, I play guitar a lot. Obviously, I play every day. But this guitar has been making me play, like, okay, when it's, when it's like, kind of relaxed time, you know, with the boy and I are watching TV and stuff like that, I think almost sometimes it might frustrate him. 
uh, because I'll say, okay, do you mind if I bring, he wants me to come watch something, but do you mind if I bring my guitar out there and noodle and I'll just play acoustically on the couch, just scales and scales and scales and bending and all kinds of fun stuff just because it makes me want to play. And we had a really cool conversation today. Um, I, I told him the other day, first of all, before I get into this conversation, I said, the, you know, um, trust issues. You can trust people and some people you can't trust people. I said, you know what, um, Eric, one thing you can trust, trust your guitar. Trust music. Put your trust in music because music and especially guitar, and I'm not just going to say guitar. I'm, I'm kind of biased here because I'm a guitar player and there's other people in the chat here that are multi-instrumentalists. Um, but guitar will never fail you. It never will. Put put your love into your guitar and whatever you put into it will come back to you um, tenfold. And so what this conversation was we we're having today, um, I forget how we, if he was, he's not watching right now, I'm sure he'd probably explain it how I said it, but we're talking in the car or something along the lines of, uh, well, you know, when you get home, I want, he's, oh, he was saying that his fingers were toughing up because when I first started playing guitar, you know, my fingers would hurt so bad. He goes, now it doesn't even hurt. I said, that's great. I said, you're playing. I said, you know what? You got to play even more. And he goes, um, and I said, you know what? You come home from school. I said, I, um, if you got homework, as long as you promise me, you're going to get your homework done. Come home from school if you had a good day, a bad day. Get on your guitar and just wail for a little bit, and you know, have some fun with that. And he's like, you know, you're probably like the only like, something along the lines of, I think you're the only dad that would actually encourage me to do guitar before homework. And, I'm, and I don't mean to sound that bad. I, I don't mean to take it the wrong way. And even mom's listening right now. She might be saying, say what? And I've always said before in the past, homework first. And homework is important, and I make sure it gets done. But the guitar will never fail you. And do you guys agree with that in the chat? It will not fail you. Um, guitar gets you through the, the awesome times and the not so awesome times. And, you know, if you think back, you might have had some relationships that were good, bad, and everywhere in between. Um, but you probably had your guitar with you each one of those times, didn't you? And it was there for you. <laughs> it didn't ask for anything other than to maybe pick you up and get played, right? And uh, so it's, uh, I maybe I'm playing it more because I'm in a really good mood lately. Um, maybe that's what it is. This guitar certainly was a catalyst for it, but uh, like I say, you're living every day for each day. Maybe each day is mean play some play some guitar and do something good with it. So uh, so there you go. Long story short about this guitar and the Fender logo on it. This guitar um, is available from Mike's Music Online as well from my Canadian friends, and it doesn't have to be my Canadian friends. It can be anyone, uh, you know, pretty much I think in North America for that matter. Reach out to Mike at Mike's Music Online and talk to him about it. I think he said he's got some coming for the, the next batch for October. He might even have them sooner than that. So I don't want to speak for him because I don't know. But uh, that's where this one come from. And uh, Mike had it set up beautifully for me, uh, the master. If anyone is within, um, you know, a short driving range, uh, distance to Mike's, even if when I say short, like I, I was about a three-hour drive, you know, give or take, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it to plan a day. He's very, very close to Niagara Falls as well, too. So even if you're coming from Niagara Falls, New York over there, or you're coming from anywhere in, you know, uh, southwestern Ontario, whatever, um, it's worth the drive to spend the day and go see him. And he can... Uh, He'll, he'll tune up your guitars for you. Obviously, there'll, there'll be a price for it. Um, and, you know, as obviously you negotiate with that him, but uh, with him, but have a look what he's got in the store and just talk guitar. You get customers that come in there and you won't know, you won't know these customers from a hill of beans and they'll be talking to you like they've known you for life. That, that's what they were treating me and I'd never met them before. So it's a very cool environment. I'm always uh, kind of shy when it comes to going to music stores and, um, you know, I never felt more at home in my life. It was very, very cool. I felt like, oh, these are my long lost buddies. So let's scroll back here. I know I missed a bunch and I need to grab another drink here. My throat is very dry. I will be wrapping up momentarily. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I probably will be trying this pedal out tonight for sure. I know for sure I will because I've been waiting for it for a while. Uh, let me see here. So um, let me see here. Uh, Joy Marquez says, good evening, Eric. Jace Chocos Guitar says, it's a happy medium. I think it's perfect. I do what you do. We love it. Thanks. Awesome, man. And um, let me see here. Adam EVH has great live broadcast and gorgeous pedal. Eric, rock on, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for the communication as of late. Nice to always hear from you. We got to actually have a phone call a while back, which was great. You know, it's nice every once while talking with some of the friends and fans of the show. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Vintage Sounds and Adam saying hi to Mystic Star. Um, Hugh Caldwell says EVH TV. Um, EVH TV gear rocks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Um, Dirty Eight says, thank you for the awesome guests. Have you ever tried to get Aldo Nova? Anyone remember him? I remember him very, very well. Uh, Life is just a fantasy. No, I've never reached out to the Aldo Nova camp. Um, it's not, I've never thought of it, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I, I like that music as much as the next person. Grew up listening to it. Um, no reason why I can't, for sure. Someone else gave me a suggestion today. Um, 
Oh, one of my buddies. I gotta gotta go back to the email and find out. He gave me another suggestion for a guest. I forget who it was, um, but I'm gonna look it up in Facebook. Send me a message through Facebook. I gotta look that up as well too. And but speaking of guests, so that is coming up. I probably alluded to it at the beginning of the show. I'm really looking forward to this fr- Friday. This coming Friday, nine o'clock. Um, Michael Sweet from Striper. I mean, we all go back to the '80s when we were a lot of us here, '80s uh, metalheads. Um, and Michael Sweet is one of the biggest Van Halen fans out there. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about. I, we're probably going to be talking a lot about Van Halen. There's going to be. I want to try to obviously sh- share some love for Striper, show some love for Striper. I mean, excuse me, I'm a big fan myself, but um, Van Halen. He loves Van Halen. I think there's even times where you know when there's a singer issue, you know, he felt like okay, let me, let me get an audition. I'm not saying that he said that or whatever, but I, I know he would have felt very very comfortable if there was an audition slot. A phenomenal guitar player himself. We're going to be talking about Striper, talking about the Sweet and Lynch. We're going to talk about his new gear with ISP Technologies, the um, the Michael Sweet. I think it's a Theta Pro DSP, the signature DSP product. Um, and I'm hoping to uh, be able to get him to play. I, I got to do a test with him this week and see if we can work out the logistics of that to maybe show us that unit and um you know have that demo and that kind of stuff like that as well so it's, it's gonna be a great night and i i'm gonna probably be going light with my questions because i know there's gonna be a lot of fan questions so if you have some fan questions um and actually you know what it probably would probably be a really really good idea is um Send me some of the some of, if you have some really really killer questions, send them to me through uh, Facebook because I have a feeling we're going to have to um, uh, pick and choose um, just because we're going to have so many people chatting that uh, we might have to cherry pick a few questions. If you got a question for Michael Sweet, send it to me through the Facebook page, facebook.com/slash EVH Gear TV. And I just got a notification too that uh, Humbucker's gone live on his show. He's doing a broadcast, so I don't want to interfere with his show. So I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit more, go through the rest of the chat very, very quickly. And I want to jump off just to pay my respects and let him um, uh, carry on because there's a lot of people that watch both shows as well too. Uh, Jay's Taco says, uh, you're the man. Love it. Looks killer. Uh, Adam EVH says, I love that 5150. Vintage Sound says, looks great, Eric. Center says, I put sweet water on my headstock. Cool. That's cool. That's where you bought yours. And that's that's cool. That's a neat uh, uh, payback to them as well. That's neat. Send me a picture of that after. I'd really like to see it, okay? Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, Bruce says, uh, Eric, nice nice job. That looks great. Um <laughs> Adam EVH says, just waiting till Sinner gets bored of the 5150, his 5150, so I can buy it. Sean Tubb says, uh, just listening to Mike's demo of the EVH 15. Um, yeah, that's pretty sick, man. Dude kills it. And he's so nonchalant. He just, he just, like, he just mellowed out and he just got tone. Got the, he's got the fingers and got the tone. He really does. So I know he'll appreciate that coming from you, Sean. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, I know, and I know you don't say that to people that you don't mean it. It's either sometimes you just, say nothing and move along or would you pay a compliment when you mean it so that's very very cool and if uh, Mike's still watching I know he's probably blushing a little bit uh, let me see here Vintage Down says Synergy uh, a musician's friend um, and let me see here Synergy says I'm keeping that one Adam it has mojo same here man This I just can't stop playing this one as a matter of fact I'm going to demo the reverb pedal with this guitar tonight and then I'm probably going to grab a Wolfgang too because I want to get I like when I'm doing a lot of uh, you know real nice reverb swells and things like that too I like to have a nice uh, in between du- dual humbucker and that kind of deal it sounds pretty nice uh, let me see here. Uh, Jay's Tacos Guitars. Hey Amen. I've got a. I've I've never gotten a fight with my guitar. I'm I'm sure we've all struggled with bad notes and like oh I think I suck today. But you never fight with your guitar. It's 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 pretty nice, you know. And I think if a guitar breaks a string, I think it's just telling you like okay come on what you got. You, that's all you got. And it, it breaks a string and it want it wants to fight right. It's one of those you know passive aggressive things I guess. Um, and Adam V E V H says guitar is therapy. And if there's one takeaway from this, uh, broadcast tonight, that's what I'm going to say. It is guitar is therapy. And, uh, it's the, one of the best therapies, uh, going that you don't have to pay, you know, $300 an hour, um, you know, to, to find out that you have no problem. You're just, you know, putting, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, gas in, in your therapist BMW. Um, so yeah, guitar is therapy. That's the takeaway for tonight. Good one, Adam. Um, uh, Bruce says guitar if you put in the time it will show you love guaranteed guaranteed <laughs> someone says you need therapy Adam I where did I see that uh, let me see here and people saying uh, I loved Aldo Nova um, what pedal okay I'm not sure so that was did you miss the unboxing uh, or maybe we're talking about another pedal uh, Vintage Sound says by Adam Adam's taken off and uh, yeah we get people are jumping over to uh, to Humbucker I want to let people go here so I just want to see if I miss anything else Tactical Six String uh, hey, bu- hey buddy I'm sorry coming in at the last the last few minutes you probably just caught a few minutes I was unboxing the uh, Big Sky Reverb from Strymon 
trying to turn it's so hard to do things backwards there you go let's turn it that way all right so i'm going to be doing a demo on that one later on. i'm going to get on the pedal board tonight got to find the uh um i got to find the uh, spot on the board for it for sure and uh, let me see here. So Crowley is saying goodnight, Bruce. And Dan Wilhite says, if I get a 5150, maybe I'll put this space for rent on the headstock. Hey, why not? Why not? <laughs> right? That'd be good. And then some company can say, okay, well, I'll put it on there for you and start dumbing it on YouTube and make a couple bucks for doing it. Never know. But listen, guys and girls and everyone, thank you so much for uh, for joining me this evening. And I used to see one chat message coming in, a, a text message. That's usually from uh, my better half. Let's check it out. And... Anyways, we're gonna have uh we're gonna have a nice evening the rest of the evening here. I go make sure the boy's done his guitar playing and I think he actually said he got his homework done already. So very, very good. Okay, it is from the better half. And um uh she's my she's my producer at this moment. You know, there's so much that she does and I and I, I, I think I'm gonna end the show by saying this. If it wasn't for that beautiful woman, I would not be doing this show once or twice or a couple times a week or whenever it is. I would not be here doing it. Because it uh, it takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of sacrifice from the family and my family is behind us 100% and it's not going to be very far down the road that Eric Jr. will be probably taking this baby over and running with it and I'll be the producer uh, behind the scenes and he'll be running it. He's, he's that much of a go-getter. But I got to thank that lady because uh, really... You, um, I would not be doing this without her. So she's awesome. Love her. And I know there's lots of uh, good positive vibes coming in from everyone in the chat continually each week for uh, well wishes uh, to get her better. And uh, even my boy's prayer group at school, he goes to a Catholic school. He uh, Even his prayer group at school is uh, getting behind it. So uh, I went out and bought him something nice as a, as a little as a treat today. He gets an allowance. He works around the house, does chores for us and stuff like that. Simple things like not mowing the lawn, stuff like that. But, you know, gotta kids got to work to do little things just keep your room clean and tidy and, and, you know, puts the dishes away and that kind of stuff. And that's kind of his allowance. And, um, the, he did something so nice for his mom the other day. Uh, he had already gotten this month's allowance and, um, he had, he went to school and he asked his prayer group if they would pray for his, pray for his mom. And he told me the story at night. And I almost started crying and you know, most kids wouldn't do that. There were some kids wouldn't do that. A lot of kids wouldn't. There's a lot of good ones out there that will, I'm not saying he's the only one, but he did that and it broke my heart. And I was like, you know, and I went to town and it was one of his fast food nights where he's having, I think he was having pizza, I think that night. And, uh, and he gets fast food, um, once a week, well, he gets a pizza on Friday and he gets a fast food at the beginning of the week. And that's it. We don't like to have the fast food a lot. And, um, I went to the store and bought him a Rick and Morty figure. It was a surprise for him. And he was really thrilled. But I was just like, you know what? That was so nice. Um, you know what you did for your mom. It was a very selfless act and I wanted to reward him with something. And, and he really wanted this figure. So he got it. So very, very cool. Um, so there's a second takeaway. Just love your family to death and, um, you know, be glad that you have them because you know, who knows what tomorrow will bring. Just wake up and smile tomorrow and repeat. Do it again and repeat. Uh, last last uh, few ch- uh, messages in the chat. <laughs> Single Cross says, Bane is talking to Will. See, my son's already left my show to go watch another one. Not a boy. Actually, that's good. They're good people, so it's all good. Um, and and thanks. JM says, awesome props to the fam. Dan Wilhite says, rock on AB. Great family indeed. Thank you. And it's it's your family too, guys. Uh, and you're our family. We, we share it back and forth because we've been doing this for a year and a half now. So if we don't feel like family, then uh, we better we better just stop doing this. And it's a dysfunctional family. Hey, what family is not dysfunctional? We put the fun in dysfunctional. And uh, so all of us, we all got our quirks. And I, I got 27 of them. Well, 27 just to start on a Monday. Uh, and there's many more quirks as well too. But we're a fun dysfunctional family. Um, okay. And Dirty Apes. Um says thank you poison eric and everyone in the chat you all rock guys and girls thank you so much i'm gonna let you go this was the longest unboxing ever and really it was just it's maybe it's clickbait maybe i said it was a product unboxing just so i can hang out with you guys that's usually what it is and uh can't blame me for wanting to talk to you guys you guys are great turn it over to little man he's going to tell us what his name is what he's playing and speaking of mike's music online he's playing the uh, limited edition uh, frankenstein guitar one of 300 in the world which mike still has in stock and he's selling it but i don't think he really wants to sell it so um it's going to take a good price to get it but you can go down there and play it and you'll see a uh, little junior holding on to it we all got to play it it was a lot of fun so eric's going to take us away We'll see you guys and girls real soon. Catch up with the conversation over on Facebook, facebook.com slash TV. Cheers. Hey, my name is Eric, and I'm playing the Frankenstrat guitar. Video production services provided by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs.